So we spoke about like playing uh, creatives in tennis. Yep. Uh, I think last week. But if you could play basketball one on one with somebody, who would it be? The unsung hero of the Mario universe, Waluigi. Oh, imagine God, that, that loser. Imagine that guy moonwalking <laughs> with a basketball around the court, just like, <laughs> just like moonwalking all over. And then you just stuff him. Like, get out of my it, face, Waluigi. Probably. But then he'll just moonwalk back to the ball and just dunk on you. Reverse moonwalk dunk. That's what yeah. I want. I will, I will foul him so hard. <laughs> I'm like, get off my court. You just want to get you, off my court. You just don't like Waluigi. Waluigi, I'm coming for you. One on one. <laughs> Welcome everybody to episode 49 of Multiplayered, oh, I'm sorry, the we podcast. Start? Yeah, we started. Sorry. Jesus. <laughs> Coming in hot. <laughs> it is hot. Very hot. Out. Javier Ortiz. That's me. And I am your other host, Zach Matt Scannis. I think that's the first time you said my name first. Yeah, well, you kind of screwed up <laughs> everything. So instead of starting over, we're just going to like rock and roll, just roll through this. Remember, don't forget... We are all over the place, in your ears and in your face. We are at YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and Spotify. And don't forget, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash multiplayer, where you can throw us a couple clams and get some sweet bonus episodes. Clams. So a couple clams. <laughs> couple we're clams. You know, we're just talking about Aquaman. Oh, so, yeah. You know, so you know, throw some clams in there. Throw us a couple there. shells. Yeah. yeah. And you can get some sweet bonus episodes <laughs> uh, that are timed exclusive for a week. Anyways, yeah. Hav, why don't we go ahead and talk about maybe some video games or something? Maybe. Because I don't care to talk about the Aquaman DC movie. It looks fun. <laughs> it looks cool. Anyway. I don't know about all that. Well, it looks fun. Either way. Um, so, <laughs> one thing I want to get out the way real quick, because I'm super excited about it. It should be really fun to watch. Uh, mm -hmm. The Overwatch League, which we've talked about in uh, previous episodes, yes. especially last week with the Disney deal going through. Um the Grand Championships are going to be this weekend, and it's going to be the Philadelphia Fusion. Shout out to the Fusion, because I'm Philly. Love those guys. You would think like they would have a tough time playing with all the like the cheese steak whiz and like the cheese steak juices just luckily, getting into their keyboards. You know, luckily none of them are from Philly, so they don't know <laughs> about that lifestyle. But they will. They will. Um, but it'll be the Philadelphia Fusion playing against the London Spitfire. So you think we'll they would have problems with all the, the tea, tea getting into their keyboard? I'm going to call crumpet it crumbs. I, I'm going to call it the Revolutionary War Part Two. This is where it all comes That's true. down. That's true. You know, they're going. We're going to go against the Queen one more time. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it should be a cool fight. You I think the Queen will be there. No, she doesn't care. Do you think she knows what they, video games they are? Bow down she is like to, a thousand years old. They bow down to an old lady overlord that knows nothing. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm joking. Um, but yeah, no, it should be an exciting match. Uh, I've been, I watched the, the past two uh, matches with uh, London and uh, Philly. Uh, Philly played the New York Excelsior, which were supposed to be the best team in the league. I think they went into the playoffs with the best record, but... Uh, it should be fun. It should be a fun, exciting match. Pizza slices that yes. got into the keyboards. <laughs> it what? causes so many issues. And before that, <laughs> Philly played the Boston Uprising. So those baked beans, the, they're all in the keyboards. Just, it was such an issue. Uh, <laughs> we they, they, they keep getting told to stop eating at the computers, <laughs> children. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, it was cool. It's, it's really it's exciting to watch. The matches are, I think they're fantastic. I love the announcers are really into it. It feels mm -hmm. like I'm watching like other sports and it's just it's really cool it's it's nice to see that the, this league is growing and the esports is taken more seriously yeah. i even have like pulled up on on philly's uh sports website they have an article about the fusion you know saying like oh you know another underdog is in philly and they have a chance to win so yeah. it's just cool it, it's nice to see uh the sport taken seriously i just wish that um the finals are going to play, be played here in la uh, yeah, they're going to new york they're... I, you know, they had that like that dope place in Burbank here, and it's yeah. just I, I don't know why they decided to move. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the only thing I can think of is they're expecting more people to show up because they're playing at the oh. Barclays Center, which I think is a it's stadium. the Charles Barkley Center, the Charles Barkley Stadium, yeah. in New York, <laughs> who he's wide widely known for playing for New York, of course, of course, right? No, he didn't play for New York at all. <laughs> he actually, played for Philadelphia, the Sixers. Um, Anyway, well, maybe I, it sounds like the the Philly Fusion is going to win. Then they're at the Charles Barkley Center, so they got home field advantage. Clearly, you know, 
uh, cheese whiz and cheese steaks beat tea every tea. time. <laughs> that's like rock, paper, scissors, cheese steaks, tea. You know, that's yeah. the game. Sure, it's, sure. Why not? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, it should be a fun match. They're they're really cool. Um, they're they're fun matches. Like I, they're really exciting. It's the highest tier. Like when I actually see people play Widowmaker, I'm there. I'm like, oh, she is viable. Yeah. When but you're really keyboard good. Keyboard mouse. Well, yeah. That's a yeah. that's true. <laughs> it's it's pretty incredible. Like this dude Carpe on the Phil team, he is just filthy with Widow. I mean, I, he's like so fast. He does yeah. the grapple into the sky and just like shoot somebody while falling. I'm always, I'm always impressed when people do Point that. Point and click, bro. Yeah. That they're mouse. Just, they're so good. <laughs> um, but anyway, shout out to the Fusion and the London Spitfire for the first inaugural Overwatch League Championship. Mm -hmm. Should be fun to watch. Should be cool. Uh, hopefully Philly wins. Go Fusion. Um, anyway, also Hammond came out. so Yeah, which I was playing with. Um, obviously, we talked about Pretty much all this I've ever watched the oh, last sorry. week or the week before. Wrecking so, ball. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Sorry if we're like kind of talking about the same stuff again. Just uh, you know, just wanted to kind of mention he's out now on consoles and you know he's playable and quick play and all that fun stuff. And you know I've been uh, I was fiddling with him today and he's a he's a hard one to kind of control and get correct. But he looks like a lot of fun. Like if you can kind of master swinging that ball around, yeah, I, it, it looks like it could be a lot of fun. So hopefully. Uh, like I can't wait till he's actually in competitive mode and people have like mastered him because yeah, he just yeah. seems like a, just such a wild card. <laughs> yeah, I, I like I, when you were playing. At one point, you fell and you grappled to save your life, and you're just swinging yeah. underneath the <laughs> stage pretty much and just trying to get back up. I would imagine like once people master him. It's like a good stall tactic to go like under the map and they're yeah. just waiting. And it's and like they'll just swing up and then slam. Yeah. It's yeah, like they I mean, don't know they're there. And then you just yeah. like <laughs> just some, wait for your team to come back and then you just swing up yeah. and pile drive them. Some some next level <laughs> strats right there. But we'll see. So, we'll see. We'll see. Uh but yeah, it should be it should be interesting. I, I can't wait to play this. I'll probably play this in a little bit today. So yeah. it should be fun. Um, should be a good time. Anyway, moving on to the bigger stories. It's a real big story. This one's by a real big story. We mean it's it's an okay story. Yeah, but it's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, like, a, it's a good one. It's, yeah, it's like something when I, I want to happen right now. Yeah. So when I read this, I was like, ooh. Yeah, nice. yeah. So uh, I have it. I don't think you have it. NBA Playgrounds no. the first one. But I've you know I've played it. Yeah, we've played it. I, I whooped your ass in it. Um, on the you, Switch. You've played it a lot more yeah, than me. Get <laughs> dunked on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so NBA Playgrounds two, the sequel. Um, is going to be published by 2K. Mm -hmm. 2K picked it up, and basically they said, we're going to make NBA Jam again. Yeah, uh, like Jam, the, the quote's up. Yeah, there, yeah, right? I'm, yeah, let me pull it There was up. a pretty decent one in that article from yeah. IGN. Uh, it's so, what's his name? Uh, the president of 2K subsidiary visual concepts called the original NBA Playgrounds a fantastic throwback to the glory days of action arcade sports. And he promised NBA 2K Playgrounds 2 will step up this energy and attitude big time. Yeah. Which makes me think, 90s attitude, NBA Jam. Yeah. That's what that so year that's, was all Yeah, about. that's like, so, you know, when I played Playgrounds with you, you know, it like, it seemed like a fun little, uh, what was it, a $10 game? Uh, yeah, 10 or 15. I, yeah. I think I got it on sale for 10 bucks. Yeah, so. so it was like a fun little, like, $10 game. But even then, like, you could see where it's just like, you, you could see what they wanted to do, but they probably had a very small budget. Yeah. And it, it seemed like the uh, kind of the, the the skeleton of what it could be. You know, it's right. it was like good like foundation, but with a with a second game, you know, I I want to see them get way crazier with it. I yeah, want to see wackiness. people on fire. You know, dunking from downtown. Yeah, yeah. I miss the cheat codes where you could play. You could play a. a you know, you're a player, but you can have like a wizard head. Yeah. Or like a baby head. Like, I miss that kind of stuff. Or like he a wolf. He plays the Clintons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it's just craziness. Yeah. It, like, I, I miss the wackiness of NBA Jam. It's just 90 sports game in general. So, yeah. Because uh, those are the most fun. Yeah, it's just, like, just that, that classic kind of arcade sports game, you know. I yeah. just kind of miss games like that. Um, you know, the, the the jams, the blitzes, all those fun games. I want NFL you know, Blitz back I know, so right? badly. I still have it on PS1. Yeah. So it's... That out. It would be cool. Yeah. I think I, I should have for N64, which... Uh, nice. Well, we got I, I don't know which one's better. I don't know if there's much of a difference. Yeah, I don't know. I've never played on the 64 version. I've uh -huh. only had the PS1 one. Let's do a cross-play. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> we, we'll play against each other. See which one's better. Um, but yeah, I just... Uh, 
Yeah, I just miss the the good old days of of NBA Jam, and so it's like yeah. with 2K picking up this game, you know, it, obviously it's like everybody really likes the uh, like the 2K basketball series. Mm -hmm. It like that's the one. I feel like that's the one series that 2K gets right that EA can't figure out with like NBA yeah. Live. Yeah, they NBA seem 2K to <laughs> seems to just blow NBA Live out of the water yeah. every single year. Yeah, and so like EA almost just like kind of lets them have it like there's years they don't even make a game <laughs> yeah because uh, they keep trying to like fix it and i don't know what's wrong with it yeah i don't but, know why, uh, why they can't get it right i don't know but you know 2k i think they like they know that's their like their big game obviously they mm -hmm. don't do a uh they don't do like a 2k football game or anything like that because ea has rights uh right. to the in or uh, to the well, it's like Madden does the football. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, so... Th yeah, that is EA. Yeah. yeah, so it's like, you know, this is like 2K's like big sports title that they release yeah. every year, and they obviously just make absolute bank off of. And to come out with a second game within that series that's kind of the arcade version yeah, of it... Yeah, exactly. I think is a very smart move. So it's like, mm -hmm. yo, here's our 2K19 game, and also here's, you know, 2K Playgrounds. Yeah. And... Despite the name of this one, where it's like, like yeah, it's, it's NBA it's, 2K and, Playgrounds 2. Yeah, it's it's so <laughs> weird. It's too many too. Yeah, it's 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 too too many. Yes, yeah, way too many. <laughs> um, but I think it's a it's a smart move from 2K, mm -hmm. and I think that because this game, I can't remember the original release date for Playgrounds, but it, uh, it was a while May, ago. May twenty. Second, yeah, its original day was May twenty second. I think it was like twenty yeah. uh, six, twenty seventeen. Yeah, so last year. Yeah, so it was supposed to come out a while ago, and then yeah. it just didn't. And yeah, and gosh, I can't remember the company that made it now. Uh, so I've got no information for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they were basically like, no, it it's quick. like, yeah, sorry, we, you know, we can't come out right now. Uh, like literally days before the game was supposed to come out, they were just like. You know, we, uh, you know, it's not going to come out, yeah. and our new release is just TBA. Uh, but don't worry, there's some good news uh, from all this, and there's a lot to be excited about. We're going to do a lot with this game. So I think, like, what had happened was, like, the game was going to release, 2K stepped in, right. they, they decided to pick the game up, put a bunch of money into it, and then basically gave these guys, like, an, almost an additional year, or yeah, yeah. Uh, an additional year to, like, really just pump some some life into this game and and just go all out make it crazier bigger better all that yeah. fun stuff add more modes make like the online mode really cool you know like give it like a really cool like competitive you know kind of tournament scene like i bet there's a lot more going into this game yeah i'm sure it was saver interactive who developed it and published by go. mad dogs um mad dog games uh yeah no because the, the first one like as much as I love playing, like, you know, it's fun, arcade basketball fun yeah. with you and a, and a friend. Um, but, like, the online scene, like, I never got it to work. Yeah. I never, <laughs> I literally, I never played an online game because it just would not work. What's up, Mad Dog and Saber? But yeah, it's, I mean, maybe it works now, but, like, when I, whenever I tried, it did not work once. Yeah. But, uh, honestly, like, to me, that game is all about... Uh, you know, doing crazy dunks and, like, ridiculous, like, three-point shots, and at the same time collecting players, mm -hmm. right? Because you get to unlock them, and it's kind of random. When you when you uh, defeat challenges or level up, uh, you get booster packs, yeah. and then they unlock players. And so, like, that was really fun. You know, it's the collect-a-thon, uh, that collector's mentality in a video game. Um, it's like catching all Pokemon, but NBA players. Right. <laughs> uh, but it was, really, it was really cool. And then the new one, it, it's it, another quote here. It promises new season and playground championship ranked modes, so there you go. a good uh, you know online competitive scene, and then players will be able to choose from over 200 current and retired NBA players uh, for the two v two matches, and it also promises the sequel feature improved online matchmaking with dedicated servers, uh, four player online matches, three point contests that'll be fun, and uh, new new playgrounds and custom matches. So, yeah. I mean, like you said, like now that 2K is like invested in it you know they're gonna pump more money into it yeah. and they're gonna make it bigger and better yeah i i think this is they really want this to be like the 2k basketball series like sidekick game where it's just yeah. like you're gonna pick up these two games every year because it's 
you know, kind of like a combination of like the NBA Street game when that was out yep. and, you know, obviously NBA Jam. Yeah. So we'll I, I, I want more, like you said, like people on fire, but I also want like more crazy, wacky power ups. Oh, yeah. Like, it's, it's like, just like, just, like get yeah. insane with that game. Yeah. It's like, make it as I, weird as possible. Yeah. It's like, I want people like, like I want to be able to like jump off of Shaq's head <laughs> for like a like a springboard slam dunk. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. I, I want to. Or like spring shoes, just yeah, like or, bouncing. Yeah, just like, like ridiculous just stuff. Make it like, weird. Like there was a really fun. I always thought like basketball games did a really good job with this. The wacky ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my favorite ones. There was a Looney Tunes basketball game on the Super <laughs> Nintendo. It was so ridiculous because you could play as old. Was it a Looney Space Tunes. Jam game? No, 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 no. It, was, it wasn't it, even the Space Jam game. It wasn't game. Space... This was before Space Jam, I think. Um, I mean, there is a Space Jam game for yeah, Super Nintendo. Yeah, there is. Never but played it, but... This is, this is just Looney Tunes basketball. I don't remember the name exactly. It's so um, weird. But it wasn't Space Jam. Uh, but it had all the Looney Tune characters, and, like, you know, they're all weird, and they could all do weird stuff. One of my favorite things to do was playing as Marvin the Martian. Right. You're running around dribbling the ball... <laughs> And when you get like you get a power up, you can like zap your opponent and turn them to dust. <laughs> and you just like you know you just kill them basically. But you know they come back. But yeah. like you know you just shoot them with your laser gun. They get turned to dust, and you can just shoot the ball. Like what a cheater! <laughs> I, it's so much fun though. Like it's so ridiculous. It makes oh, no man. sense. And like Tasmanian Devil could like spin and hit people. And just like that kind of wackiness is what yeah. I want in these kind of sports games. Now, let me let me throw this out there because this is now a two K game. Okay. No. If it's anything like NBA Jam, we're gonna have some guest stars. What 2K character do you want to see in in a playgrounds game? Well, if if this was like three years ago, Obama. <laughs> like, I think President Obama would have been awesome. <laughs> I mean, he could still show he up. He can still show up. I, I would I would be surprised. I if bet he, did he show up. I bet he'd throw down. Oh yeah, he would. He would absolutely. <laughs> I yeah, but I think Obama would be one. Uh, let's see. Who, who's a big basketball? I don't know. Who else <laughs> likes basketball? Now I'm going to throw mine out there. Yeah. Because like I said, it's a 2K game. Yeah. So you think about like 2K series. Uh, I want John Marston. Oh my gosh. In this game. Like, <laughs> just a little cross company cooperation. Yeah. Yeah. John yeah. Marston and Bioshock I mean, they, it's people. Like, yeah, it's like 2K publishes it. So that's, it's that's like, true. Yeah, that's true. It's like I uh, like I'll take John Marston in that game. Yeah, wasn't well, wasn't uh, was Mass Effect two K? No, that's EA. No. Uh, well, at least yeah, what? two and three I think are EA. Oh, was it? Yeah, oh, I thought it was two K for some reason. No, no, you're right. It was EA. It was EA. Yeah. What was I thinking? That's two K. Some other. I don't know. But like a, the Big Daddy yeah, from Bioshock. Big Daddy. Would be pretty great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. So that, <laughs> I meant more re- like real people, but well, you know, real people too. Because like the Clintons were in like the 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 old. Yeah. Ones. Yeah. <laughs> And you have like, I don't know. I, I just said like Scorpion and stuff because it was basically Midway. Yeah. yeah. You know? Oh my God, you're right. Yeah. I forgot about that. Oh, jeez. I just want like weird <laughs> wizard heads again. Yeah, yeah. That was the funniest thing in the world. Like you're playing as like Michael Jordan with like a wizard face, <laughs> like an old man wizard head on top of this Michael Jordan body. Yeah. But yeah, it should be fun. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the first one for a $10 game. I hope the second one isn't like ridiculously yeah, marked up. probably 15 bucks, maybe 20 <sighs> I hope so. That'd be my guess. Yeah, I hope it's not much more. Yeah. Does it have the new release date on there? Um, no. Well, it says it has a new release date, but it just doesn't have it listed. It says later this year. So later this year, look out for NBA Playgrounds 2. Yeah, let's Coming look. to you by 2K. Let's see if it, if it has an... No, there's no initial release date. Uh, fall. All right. So... This so. fall with everything else that's coming out. In so the fall. right next to Red Dead, we're gonna have NBA this game, and too. then you can play John Marston in, in both yeah. games. Cross or, company you know. cooperation. No I'd, uh, I'd be down for that. Uh, but speaking of new games coming out, there's this one game that I, I saw um, yes. yesterday on the Switch eShop. This game has been a uh, early access game on Steam since last year, I think. Mm-hmm. Which seems like a really long time. But I don't know. Some, sometimes it's just like that, where it's just like these early access games last forever, <laughs> or just there forever. Yeah, yeah. It's a, even like Fortnite is still technically an early access, and it's just like is you, it really? Yeah, like wow. anytime you're on the game in the menu, it says early access, and it's just like yo, your game's out. Yeah, just just say you're out. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, because it and, says here uh, that the initial release date for this game was May 10th last year. It's yeah. been around for a year, over a year now, yeah, in early access on Steam. And um, there's another game that uh, uh, We Happy Few 
It was on early access for like three years. Really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, and the game has changed a lot since then because it got picked up by uh, Gearbox yeah, yeah. Uh, for the publishing rights. So it's like I think they, they pumped a bunch of money into it. Uh, but it's still just like it's, these these games are just in early <laughs> access for just absolutely ever. It's yeah, just yeah. like, yeah, just, just put your game out. Or just shut up and, and just like make your game yeah, <laughs> and then I just mean, come out like I think this we, early access stuff. Just I think we talked about that a long time ago in one yeah. of our episodes, like early access if it's hurting or killing. Yeah, it's just it's, it's just a it's, weird. Yeah. yeah, it's just weird. I feel like like an early access thing. I understand, especially if like you're an indie developer and you you want people to test your games and stuff. But it's like I would wait like six months before your game's out and then like put it up for early access and yeah, let yeah, people yeah. try it and then tweak things. But it's like when your game's out. Basically out for like years. It's like yeah, it gets confusing as far as like when the game's actually out. Yeah, the actual release date. Yeah. Um. So this game is Dead Cells, mm -hmm. uh, developed by Motion Twin Studios, I believe is what it's called. Yeah, Motion Twin Studios. Um, they're a French developer. It looks interesting. It's gonna be released, released now finally on uh, August seventh. Mm -hmm. Um. So in about a week or two. Uh, coming to all the, the platforms, Microsoft, uh, Sony, Nintendo. Um, but it looks really interesting because it's like a Metroidvania, Strider-y, Ninja Gaiden-y, uh, kind of roguelike. Yeah. Uh, um, Is it a procedurally, roguelike? Yeah, that's what they said. Oh, uh, gotcha. Procedurally generated kind of thing. A lot of terms. Yeah. <laughs> but it looks, but overall, it looks really cool. It, the action looks really fun and like just if it looks like it feels good like it looks yeah, yeah. Uh, very smooth it's like a uh, a 2d action side scroller platformer uh with um some 16-bit like artwork here um but what's cool is like the the combat system looks really interesting because watching the trailer like there's not many details that i have on it outside of what i saw in the trailer because i just saw this last night right um but it seems like you've got like weird dash attacks. You've got a bunch of different weapons. Like at one point, he's got like a bow and arrow. He's got like a yeah. He had a ton of different. Yeah, he had like a giant broadsword. Yeah, thing yeah. He's like got a bunch of different weapons, and it's the whip. It, yeah, it looks like he's also got like a parry system because mm -hmm. in some of the shots in the trailer, it says parry, and he like does yeah. something right back. And it's it, a Matthew Perry system. The Matthew Perry, otherwise <laughs> known as Friends. <laughs> um, but it's also like weird because like he does this twice in the trailer. Where it looks like he goes like Super Saiyan. Like at the very beginning he goes like, ah, and you see gold above <laughs> his head. I'm like, what? And then he just starts. And um, But it looks cool. I mean, it, it, I have no idea what this story is about. I'm sure many people do because they've played through it. It's been out for like a year. Right. Um, but it says death is like the beginning or something in the trailer. Like it's not the end, it's the beginning. And so I'm, like, I'm guessing you die and you're fighting in like hell or something. Oh, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe something like that. Yeah, maybe, but because uh, you you're, fight, cause you're fighting Super all Saiyan. these... Yeah, you die, turn <laughs> Super Saiyan, and you're fighting like monsters, and like that guy looks like a skeleton guy, and like, yeah. you've got these dudes with bows. So I mean, it just looks like a weird, crazy game. Yeah, it looks it looks like a cool game. Like you know, you, you showed me the trailer, and I was checking it out, and it's just like the you know, uh, like the movement and everything looked yeah. good. The, like the like one of my things with like a two D game like this is just the uh, the combat, and just make sure like everything feels fluid and feels yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Like. Um, you know, something obviously, you know me, I, I absolutely love Towerfall Ascension, mm -hmm. you know, just because of like how fluid everything is. Yeah. And, and this has that like fluidity to it. Where yeah, it's like yeah, like he's bouncing off walls. It, mm -hmm. it seems like nothing is ever an obstacle. Like you're, you're kinda, yeah. you can always kind of just move. Yeah. And uh, the same way, um, you know, Metroid or Castlevania, like there's always directions which to go. Like there's always a new room to explore, or, like yeah. places to go back to. Uh, it just seems, and, and there's a game um, that came out not too long ago called Rogue Legacy, which is like that as well. Where, but the only thing is, like, what I did read about this, and it seems similar to Rogue Legacy, is that if you die, everything changes. Yeah, like yeah. it's not, it's you know, a lot of roguelikes are kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. So, Rogue Legacy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, it, it'll it'll kind of be like that. Where if you die, I don't know if you lose power ups and stuff. Like I don't yeah. that I don't know the details on, but. Um, but yeah, no, it looks really fun, and it look, it's going to be a twenty dollars game on the eShop. So mm -hmm. it seems like a great game for the Switch. Um, yeah, it seems like it, it, it's just one of those games you just kind of pick up, go play yeah, a little yeah. bit, put it down, pick it up. Yeah, and it's like games like this. 
I don't know. We've talked about it before. It just seems like so perfect for the Switch. I know, right? It's it, it's crazy how many games are just coming out for that, that yeah. system. That just it's like you know that feels right there. Like I was looking yeah. at um, I was telling you about it earlier, uh, Banner Saga. Mm-hmm. It's a game like I've known about it. I've seen a couple things here and there, but uh, I I don't know why I never really paid a little more attention to it. But I saw like a a trailer for the trilogy that's coming out. Mm Because the third game's about to come out, and then they're, like, kind of releasing all three games within this, like, little trilogy pack as well. And I was looking at it, and it kind of looks like a, like, Fire uh, Emblem-style game, like a strategy RPG. Right, right. um, But set in this, like, Viking-style universe. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, the mythology is just, it's on fire right now. Yeah, it's on fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, man, that, that game looks beautiful. The yeah. combat looks really cool. And just like, you know, thinking about that on the Switch just sounds so perfect. Yeah. And it's yeah. like waiting for a, a, like a, a like a Fire Emblem game for the Switch. It's like, I, that's something that I'm like, yeah, I could pick that up and yeah. play that. Yeah. What, what I really liked about that when you showed me the trailer, uh, the artwork, the animation style mm-hmm. is just like, it's beautiful. It looks like classic cartoon animation, like, yeah. like, uh, like Dragon's Lair. Yeah. Dragon's Lair or like coming kind of some of those like way old school um, Disney. Uh, yeah, movies. Well, it, it looks like a Don Bluth movie because mm-hmm. Don Bluth is a guy that you know him and some people at Disney that left Disney and they they started their own animation studios and I think they did Dragon's Lair if I'm not mistaken. Or, oh, did they? I I think so. I I feel like he was a part of that somehow because that animation style looks just like his. Right. Uh, and so does this. It looks a lot like Don Bluth inspired. Um, so it just, it, it just looks yeah. beautiful. It looks like classic 2D hand drawn animation, which I miss. Like I love yeah. that style so much it looks so good and so gorgeous especially on a video game it's like you don't really see that too much yeah. it looks like you're playing like a live cartoon yeah it looks super cool like yeah. i uh I'm, I'm i'm thinking i'll probably pick up the trilogy which the so the third game's coming out uh oh gosh i can't remember the date it's it's early august though mm-hmm. and or no no i maybe very late july one of the other. but Either it's way, it's uh, really close there's no way to know, though, unfortunately. <laughs> mm, uh, nope, there's not. <laughs> there's, uh, uh, but the, like, the trilogy, because each one's 20 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the trilogy is, like, $40. Oh, that's a good so, deal. Yeah, so I was thinking, like, of picking up the, the trilogy, but... Uh, December 2018? Huh? Well, hold on. The Banner Saga 3 will launch this summer. Oh, considerably earlier than it's originally anticipated. There December go. 2018. Um, there you go. Yeah, so... I, I kind of want to get the uh, the trilogy, but for the Switch, it comes out in September. I think like mid September or something like that. Yeah. So it's like eh, I'll probably wait, but like if if I know I haven't played these games, but it's like if you're looking for like a uh, you know some sort of game that's sort of like Fire Emblem or something similar as far as like a strategy RPG. Yeah. Uh, you know that's on the Switch. This seems like a a good direction to go for sure. Yeah, it seems like a good uh, way to satiate your hunger for a Fire Emblem yeah. game on the Switch, which will come eventually. But yeah, this seems like a good replacement. Honestly, it looks like I said, like to yeah, me, it's a dope looking game. Yeah, I uh, visually, it's gorgeous. I don't, I don't know why I never paid more attention to it. <laughs> I, I never heard of it until you mentioned it to me. Like, yeah. I had no idea this existed, but yeah, it looks great. It's, it's, it's there. Yeah, it's there, and it's <laughs> it's not going anywhere. <laughs> um, what is it? So, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what else? Uh, uh, so this on? is the big one. The, the big kahuna in terms of stories for the week. Mm-hmm. Next-gen consoles. Ooh. Next-gen confirmed. We've got the release date right here. <laughs> what is it? No, not really. Uh, but but Microsoft, some details have come out for their next-gen. Mm-hmm. Codename Scarlet. Yep. Um, as opposed to Scorpio. They like S's. SC's. Um, so what's interesting, the most interesting about this right now is the fact that they want to create something dedicated to streaming games. As opposed to classic game consoles, this bad boy will be streaming everything, so it seems like you wouldn't have to... Very Netflix, so you won't have to buy anything. It'll just, it'll... I guess some months, some games will be available, and then they'll be taken away at some point. Maybe they'll come back, who knows? It just seems like they're, they're... Microsoft's going all in on the streaming service in terms of games. Yeah, and, and Phil Spencer kind of mentioned this a little bit at E3. He's been talking about it since then. It's like X, like the Xbox team, they're really looking at this like cloud-based world yeah. where just you're, you can stream anything, anywhere, all the time. 
you know, it's on your Xbox, it's on your on your you know Surface tablet, it's yeah. on your phone, on your cat, on your dog. Yeah, Microsoft animal. wants complete synergy with yeah. all their products that you'll have from your PC to your tablet to your Xbox. Yeah. And then I guess your account just all of them is logged in there so you can play all your games or download them to specific systems or consoles or PCs, whatever. Yeah, and I think it's like, this is a service where it's like, kind of like Netflix where they have like these original series like like Stranger Things or something where it's like, they make that because they want you to sign up for right. it to get that. So I think this is something where it's like, they're going to make this console because you want the, the cloud-based service, yep. which you also pay for. Mm -hmm. And you want the cloud-based service because there's like, a Halo 5 on there, yep. or, or no, not a 5, uh, like Halo 6, Six is in there, uh, or there's a, a new Gears game, or, you know, something from, you know, Ninja Theory that's on there, like, all, like, they've been picking up all these, um, the, these companies, that, you know, five or six, like, brand new companies that yeah. they've, they've scooped up, because I think they're just going to be working on all these AAA titles that are just going to incentivize you to buy the, the cloud service, because then it's like, oh, man, 10 bucks a month, 15 bucks a month, I right. get all of these games for free. Yeah. Kind of like how you feel when you, you know, you have like a PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold yeah. and you get these free games and it's like, oh man, free games. Like, well, it's not really free. You know? Yeah, it's like you're technically you're still paying for it. But it's, you know, it's something where it's like, it doesn't feel like uh, you're paying for this game. It's like right. you're just paying for this like sweet library and oh man, new Halo games on here. Yeah. I don't have to pay any extra money. So it's, I think that's kind of like the direction Xbox wants to go. Is like, yeah, you're gonna buy this console, which will hopefully be a decent price. You know, like I don't think it would be any more than four hundred. Like I so that, but that's the thing. I'll, I, and I'll just say this real quick, and I'll let you keep going. Yeah, they from what this art, from what this report on IGN says, they're currently planning two different pieces of hardware. One of which will be a traditional console. Mm -hmm. And the other uh, will be dedicated to the, the, well, rumored, the Scarlet Cloud, a game streaming platform. Right. Um, which makes me wonder how much longer they would invest in physical copies of games. I that's, think that's for the, a while. I, I, I do too. But it also comes to a point, it's like, all right, we're making twice as many machines uh, for these games. How much longer are we going to deal with the price of making discs when we can stream it for yeah. much cheaper? I think we're at least one, at least one more console generation off, if not two. Yeah. It's just one of those things you got stubborn old men like me that don't want to change. Like yeah. I don't want, I, like I want to own my stuff, you know. Well, I don't think that's a that's a stubborn old. I mean, maybe it's an old way of thinking, but like to me, it also comes down to preservation. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, like because, and I'll use Netflix as an example. Stranger Things, you know, it's a great show. A lot of people love that show. Um, the only time I've ever seen a Blu-ray or DVD set for that was a like special collector's edition with had which had some other stuff. Yeah. But much more expensive than a regular copy of a Blu-ray or DVD. Yeah. Um, so it seems like to me that might be where these are heading, where it's like, yeah, guess maybe. what? We have our new Microsoft Cloud service. You can stream a ton of games, and hey, look. Brand new Halo Six, you know, you sign up, you basically can play it for ten bucks a month or whatever, yeah. whatever the price will be. And if you really want it, here's a, a hundred dollar collector's special right. edition, <laughs> and it's just like, well, I don't want to have to pay a hundred dollars yeah. for the special collectors. Like, I just want a copy of it, yeah. just so I can. I, I think they'll they'll still. You know, for for the foreseeable future, anyway. Right. At least, like I said, for at least one more generation. Like I think they're gonna try and make it so easy for people to buy like uh, a streaming console and stream everything that like the following generation you won't want a hard copy of anything. You know, yeah. that's the, like they want to make it that easy, where it's like not only can you share your like your 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 games that you're streaming with your buddies, but you can take it on the go anywhere you want and just they would yeah. be like. They want to just have it where you could just kind of play it on anything, on like anywhere, like whatever you want to do. Blah 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 blah. Right. It and, just yeah. it it just what that's the only thing that that scares me is like, well, I want to show my friends this really cool game, but I don't have internet connection. Yeah. <laughs> I can't show it to them, and I can't yeah. play it, and so it scares me because like, and I'm not I'm not being pessimistic. Like, oh, you know. Post-apocalypse, when the internet doesn't exist, we're not going to be able to play these games. It's yeah. it's more like, you know, the 
pra uh, the practical uh, way of thinking is like, well, now you're it's an additional step in order to play my game, mm -hmm. uh, where you know I can't just plug it in and just start playing. You know, it's it's you need you need a connection. You always need to be connected, which yeah. which is what people had issues with when the Xbox One originally came out. Yeah, but see, they they phrased it in the wrong way. <laughs> this time, their their marketing is gonna. Like, they're gonna try and be like, we're for the gamers, you can do right. anything, anywhere, no worries, yeah. don't think about it, just get these subscriptions. Yeah, All yeah. this stuff's gonna happen, and then, you know, let's say they just crush it on the next console, the following console, that's when they're gonna start dropping all that stuff on yeah, you again. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, it's Netflix, they're gonna, they're gonna be Netflix. Like, yeah. they're, well, they're gonna try and be Netflix. Yeah, everybody wants to be Netflix, man. Well, it's, it, it's crazy. It's, it's it's you're right. I mean, every, all the businesses are reshaping their models yeah. to be like Netflix. Which it's is, like Capcom's testing the waters for cloud-based games yep. uh, with like Resident Evil Seven on Switch. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, EA is like really looking into kind of uh, having probably. Uh, I would assume it's going under uh, like EA Origins kind of thing, yeah. which is sort of their like. They have like a store and all that kind of nonsense. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm sure Sony's going to have, like they already have their streaming service, but yeah. it's not ideal at the moment. Right. I think it's more about classics. Some, and... Right. I, I think they'll, they're will they going to be trying to revamp that for you know their next console right. and spin it in a way that's a lot more interesting. Um, and if I was Sony and if I was Microsoft... Because think, think about this for a moment. You're going to have two subscriptions with these consoles. Yeah. Now, where it's just like, okay, so I need, you know, for, you know, I just bought my $400 console, and I now I need my Xbox Live Gold account, and then I'm going to need my, my, you know, Xbox Cloud account. Right. And now I'm paying $120 a month for, or, or actually, I probably wouldn't be that much. Uh, you know, it's like yeah. 60 bucks. A year, I think, for well, it's sixty bucks a year uh, for the for the PS Plus Gold membership. Yeah, yeah. So maybe an additional, maybe put in like an extra twenty bucks for the year, and there's your cloud streaming. I'd be more than that because it's like ten bucks a month. No, basically. Yeah, no, so right, it's like one hundred and twenty dollars oh, a year. So it's basically it's like two hundred dollars a year essentially. Yeah. Or like one hundred and eighty dollars a year for these two subscriptions. Right. So if they were smart, they'd be like. Here is the PlayStation Plus Plus, which is like, or the Plus Everything. Pro, where it's like you got your cloud-based thing and you got your internet all in one. Uh, and then Xbox would be the same way. It's like here's our Xbox Platinum, and it's like it's you know Xbox Live Platinum, and it comes with the cloud uh, service, right. and it comes with you know Xbox Live and all that, and it's just all yeah. under one umbrella. I yeah, think they have to do that. I mean, I'm assuming the same way Netflix has different plans, uh, I'm assuming they'll have the same thing. Well, mm -hmm. you know, you can have different plans for what you want. I mean, you know, Netflix is all based on the quality of the video you're getting from yeah. 1080 4K and all that, or just regular SD. Um, but yeah, it's, I guess, I guess they'll have multiple <laughs> plans for, I don't know, I just, I don't. It's, it's going to start getting complicated. It is. It's, it's extremely complicated yeah. and pricey because, yeah. you know, you're adding an additional cost per month that you need to factor into everything else. And it's also weird because everything's kind of going this, the way of uh, 4K right now. And as it, as it is right now, the best your streaming is going to be is 1080. So it's right. like you're going to put all this money into, like, these 4K... Uh, projects and you know you have all these 4k assets and you got people that have 4k tvs but they can only stream all their stuff in yeah. like 1080 you know yeah. we just don't have the bandwidth yet you know we don't have like the infrastructure for like every household to be streaming all this like 4k right. stuff it's just and it's also and i've, I've said this before this also affects net neutrality because mm -hmm. that's you know, true they have the ability to bottleneck your internet service yeah. to where they want you to be so i mean it's just it, it just gets really, you just see how every, all these layers are adding up and it gets more and more complicated with, yeah. when it comes to streaming and having to rely on a, on a service. Whereas you could just buy a game and just plug it in and just <laughs> I know, that's, that's what I, I just, like. I, I don't understand, like yeah. it's, it's a lot to deal with. I mean, unless Sony and Microsoft would be like, guess what, we have our own internet plan now. You can get Microsoft internet for however much this would be. Which would be crazy to think of. Yeah. I don't know how, 
I don't know. It just but see, like you think about like you know, because like Google has it, like an internet service yeah. for for instance, and it's like they're going to be doing their cloud based gaming. So you think about yeah, that's having, right. They have their own thing. Coming it, it, up. So it's like they could have a Google internet service where it's like. And then they just throttle it, so it's like your Xbox Live can only go but so quick. But yeah. it's like your Google Cloud See, that's gaming why stuff. It's just, it's just, it's too, it's, cr cool. it's crazy. It's yeah. it's too, it's it's too much. Like, you need to be on this side, <laughs> and this is all you get. You can't, ha you literally cannot have everything. If you try and have everything, one, it'll be super expensive. Yep. And two, only some things will work better than those. Yeah, that's, <laughs> it's just it, yeah. When when I think about the the price of like all of this stuff, it's it's a little crazy. Where like let's say you 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 love Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft, and heck even PC. And you know you got you have your PC already, so I won't I won't th talk about that too much. Uh, uh, but you know if let's say you buy you know the Switch to the Xbox, yeah. uh, you know. Scarlet. Yeah, whatever you want to call it, you know, and, you know, the PS5. Yep. And then you think about, so it's like, you know, you're at a thousand plus, probably twelve hundred dollars. Oh, yeah. And then you think about the subscriptions every year. So it's like, yep. you got probably the cloud based thing with Sony plus the, their, you know, uh, let's say like each thing is like a hundred and twenty bucks a year. Yeah. Uh, you know, Nintendos Jeez. would probably be cheaper, you know, they're probably at like fifty bucks a year for yeah. the next console. Yeah. So then you're just like, you know, you got twelve hundred bucks plus like another like yeah, it's so you know three hundred plus dollars probably. It's just like yeah, yo, it's like a, it, it's it's always been an expensive hobby. I get that. Yeah. But now it's getting to a point where it's like this is like my life. Yeah. <laughs> like I can't. And that's for games you don't keep. You know, it's like yeah, I feel that's like, the issue I'm having. <laughs> you don't keep these games. They're yeah. just it's like a Netflix movie. It'll be up there. Well, not a Netflix original, but a movie. It'll be up there, and then it could be taken down whenever they want. Yeah. And so, so that's the issue. That's my. That's like one of the key issues I have. It's like, well, I like having a game just tucked away in my, you know, in my closet. I know, and if right? I feel like playing it, I'm just gonna bring it out and play it when I yeah. want. It's like one one thing we've been doing is our little backlog yeah. s uh, segment, and uh, you know, I just I've had Doom sitting on my shelf for literally ever, and I just I don't know why I haven't gotten around to it, but right. I finally got around to it. Which, by the way, I finally finished it. So it's a it's a really good junk food game, right. <laughs> uh, but it's like that might have just been taking all that service and I didn't. And I you didn't get a chance, chance to play. You know, exactly. Yeah, and it's just like you know you got uh, the South Park games now for your PS4, and it's like I've been wanting to play those. Mm -hmm. I'll probably just borrow yours and, and play. It. Same thing with like Horizon. I just still haven't gotten around to it. Yeah, that's yeah. on my backlog list. And, that, <laughs> and that's the, and that's another factor is because like. You know, this is not like a movie or a TV show where a movie you can finish it in an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, these games require yeah, like, time. You think about like Persona Five; that's like a hundred plus hour game yes. easily. Any of these games, <laughs> like you, like you want to be invested in these games because you know yeah, they're games. We love these games, and yeah. they're great stories. They're great. It's great fun to play through them, especially if you want to go through them slowly and look at every corner of the world. Yeah. It's just really fun. Or to what do about that. something like Overwatch? That's another thing. Like, I, I don't know. It's just, it's scary to think Give of. us the answers, Hobbs. I, I don't know. It's it's, it's scary yeah, to, like... It's, it's a know, weird future. Imagine it's... that. Imagine you're playing Overwatch on your new Microsoft account. And you're yeah. like, this is awesome. And then, like, a year later, it's like, all right, we're taking this off. Yeah, it's like, ah, oh, the contract's over with Blizzard. Yeah. You know, they're going to do their own service or something. It's yeah, like, it's just... And more, then... It's just... I don't know. I mean, it just... Yeah, and that's not, like... Like I said, there's other companies looking into this cloud-based stuff. So think about like if Xbox has theirs, but EA decides to do their own, and and Capcom decides to do their own, and Blizzard decides yeah. to do it, and Activision. Do so what are you gonna have thirty subscriptions? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the and that's the issue, it's and that's where like that's happening now with like like you said before the show, like DC is out launching their own app with their yeah, stuff. It's, uh, Netflix Disney. has yeah, Disney's gonna launch their own thing. It's like well now you can't watch. I'm assuming you won't because right now like. Like, I love Batman the Animated Series. And yeah. we have Amazon Prime, so I watch it on Amazon Prime all the time. You're telling me that, like, whenever this DC app comes out, it's gonna be all that's going to be taken off Amazon Prime? Oh, man, that's, I, it's that's scary. scary. It's, it's scary. scary to think of. Because then we're going to a world where, like, you know, back when cable boxes ruled the world, and, like, 
everyone started getting rid of it once the internet happened because they're like, oh, I can just watch your stuff here. Yeah. And then like slowly throughout the years, Hulu and Netflix and, and these uh, Prime Video have all grown where it's like, no, now we have our exclusives and you can only watch our stuff on here. It's like, all right, well, I'll get a subscription to Hulu. All right, well, I'm going to get a subscription <laughs> to Netflix. I'm going to get a subscription yeah, to Amazon Prime. I'm gonna, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be this like post-apocalyptic world this like Mad Maxian like wasteland of just people with like a hundred like fifty subscriptions. Yeah. And just everybody's just broke. Or it's just gonna be like we're all gonna be in factions where it's like, all right, I'm part of the Netflix crew. I'm part of the Hulu crew. You know, it's just it's crazy. You're like, just wearing the colors, just yeah. like it's just a bright green. Get outfit. off my turf, Hulu. It's just it's it's I don't know. I don't know how this is gonna work out because like yeah. it's, it it's gets so weird. expensive. Yeah. And like it it's just and you have to pay, like, I don't know. It just, it's scary. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, like, a lot of times I, I'd i say I'm pretty good at, like, predicting things with, like, the sort of where the industry's going. And it's just, like, it's tricky to think about, like, where the industry's going to be, like, 10 years from now and, like, yeah. where these consoles are going to be. You know, are we still going to have, like, software, you know, that's not... In a, just a digital cloud somewhere, you know. So yeah, yeah. yeah we'll we'll see, man. It's, it's, it's a little it's a little freaky. It, so. it is. It's crazy to think of. It's it's you know. All it, I can say, listeners out there, speak with your wallet. That's true. Speak with your wallet because that, that, yeah, that's absolutely. ultimately that's like, if you don't like it, just just speak with your wallet. Yeah, it's, yeah. Money talks. I yeah. mean, this is a world built. I mean, and it's funny because like I had a teacher in, in college who always used to tell me if you ever have an issue with trying to figure out something, it was a business class. Yeah. Whenever you have an issue, like thinking of something practically, she always said, follow the money. Yeah. Literally follow the, that will, that will lead you to your answer. So it's like, you know, if you don't want something, do not buy it. Like yeah. I, like, and for me personally, that's like Fallout 76. <laughs> I, I mean, I haven't played the beta yet, but when October. I October. Well, I, yeah. When I see it, when I play it, I'll decide then. And if it's just trash, I'm like, well, I'm not gonna buy it. Same thing with like Battlefront 2. Yeah. People spoke with their wallets, and you know what EA did? They like they just, they like sat on their heels. And they're like, "Oh my God, we got to do something." <laughs> and they changed everything. Yeah, because nobody was buying it, and you could buy like the the PS4 Pro edition, which by the way is really nice. Like it looks cool. It's like all black with like the I, I think the Death Stars on it or something. Or no, like, it's uh, like the Rebel logo. Or... I think it's the Rebel logo. Yeah, yeah, but it looks really cool. Like it's yeah. it's it's just it looks like a cool system, and it's like. You could buy that for like dirt cheap a few months ago. Like it was at like two fifty, I think. With yeah, the, I've been the seeing uh, I've been seeing Destiny two for like five dollars. Really? All, like everywhere. It's it's kind of crazy. Ooh. Like you yeah. know, people are pretty upset with that game, I, and it, I think it like really yeah. affected their sales and stuff. Exactly. So it's like you know <laughs> these these you know it always comes down to the money. If and it's it's like voting. It's like you know it's the same thing. It's like yeah. don't think that your dollars don't count. They do because you know you're you're speaking not only for yourself but a bunch of people who aren't yeah. buying this. So, yeah, okay. speak with your wallet. It's 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 the best way to go about this. So, okay. So what else? Uh, what else we got today? Uh, uh, well, we're getting kind of near the yeah. end here, but I've so, got I've got some Historia. If you want to play, let's, let's do a little. If Historia. you want to try and win one, well, it's not really for like a, I don't want it to be a game where I'm losing every. I just want you know have well, a little fun. We'll stop losing. You know? <laughs> All right. So, All right, lay it on me. All right, I'm ready. So, so, this one was tough, mainly because we're at a point in the summer where there's not a lot of games coming out, right? Right. So, I couldn't really find something, a specific game being released here in the States on this day and this time. But what I do have, it, it's kind of like Nintendo trivia, and I think you know your Nintendo trivia pretty a well. D a little bit. So, here's the deal. It's July 15th. Okay. 1983. Ooh, 83. This is before our existence. Okay. We're we're not even we're not even around. <laughs> you know, this is the era of Star Wars is dominating mm -hmm. the world. Uh, people are looking forward to the Back to the Future movie in a couple years. Mm. <laughs> uh, it's the wild eighties. Okay, so <laughs> the wild wild eighties. <laughs> so this is a <clears throat> three games, right? Yep. Nintendo launches the Famicom, right? So we we're 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 in the arcade era, but we're starting to step away where it's like, oh, the home console. You can yeah, bring yeah. arcade games back home. That's crazy. 83. 1983. So crazy. Th these were three launch games for the Famicom that, 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 you know, widely beloved in the arcade. Everyone right. loved them. Beautiful cabinets. Great, fun games. Took the world by storm. Yeah. Everybody loved them. I need you to tell me what those three launch games oh, for the Famicom. Shoot. For the Famicom. For the Famicom. 
I'm gonna go with a balloon fight. <clears throat> oh. Wrong. Okay. But I will say, I don't know if this gives you a hint at all. Uh, these ports were the por first ports that were done by Nintendo. Like this was Nintendo porting the games to the Famicom. It wasn't another company. Hmm. Uh, well, gotcha. Okay. So are these Nintendo developed games, or are these just they they did the the ports? Uh, two of them are. Two of them are Nintendo games. Mm -hmm. Um. Let me just. I'm double checking the last one, but I'm pretty sure. Hmm. Uh, two of them are. See, it's like, I know some of the games that came out for, like, the NES when, like, it hit the States, but... Oh, well, I mean, Nintendo co-developed. Gotcha. So, yeah. They're yeah. part of it, but they, you know, there were other companies multiple hmm. as well. Just think, just, I, I honestly, like, don't think too hard about this. Think uh, of, like, yeah. okay, big Nintendo arcade coming to the Famicom. You gotta put yourself, yeah, so put yourself like, in that mindset of like the kids who like, we go to the arcade, we're playing these games. Well, see, I would say like Donkey Kong, but I, you know, I don't think that came until later, like a, like an NES kind of Famicom port. Well, but Donkey Kong Country or Donkey Kong? Yeah, that's yeah, one. That's one of that's them. One. Oh, okay. Donkey cool. Kong. Okay. You got one. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, no doubt. No doubt I'm gonna no say. Doubt. I think baseball is actually. <sighs> One was that no, one? No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, damn, I hate you. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to th like at the time in the arcades. I mean, you had your co-developed games. Uh, yeah. So Nintendo, Nintendo uh, was in development for all three of these. Uh, now, obviously, the first uh, one you named, Donkey Kong, was also Atari. They're also yeah. co-developed. Um, so these last two, let's see if I can help you out here. Uh, this second one was also Atari, uh -huh. uh, Coleco, and then Nintendo. And then this other one, which I think this will be the uh, tricky one, was Nintendo and uh, the Parker Brothers. And the Parker Brothers? Yeah, a toy company, I think, is what they're best known for, Parker Brothers. Uh, yeah, toys. And, uh, but they also do like, Monopoly and stuff like that. That's, toys. That's weird. They make games? They did for this one, at least. <laughs> what games did they make? Well, okay, so Atari, like, I, w I would go with something like... Like Galaga, or um, I think I doubt Centipede was one. Nope. Uh, these are good guesses. I mean, these yeah. are super popular arcade games. Yeah. That everybody loved. Just think, super hmm. popular arcade games. That'll narrow it down. Yeah, but you know, it's like Nine. then there's like Asteroids and all that fun stuff. But yeah, I, I don't. I just can't Not see asteroids. that like releasing for the Famicom yeah, when no. that first came out. All right, lay, lay the the other two on me, so we're not in, in the dead air. Are <sighs> you giving up two. on me? You got one oh, out yeah. of three. God, you suck. <laughs> All right, fine. The second one, which you say Donkey Kong, I thought this would be the second guess. Donkey Kong Junior. Oh, so they released Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Junior. Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Junior. Wow. Two of the three launch games for the the Famicom, and the last one, co-developed by Parker Brothers. The Popeye game. Oh, really? The, that was them? That was, yeah. Oh, see, I... Like, I knew they did a, a Popeye game for the NES, but I felt like it just came years later. I didn't know no, it was like No, this a, was a launch game for the Famicom. Man, it's, it's such Kong? a hard but good game. Oh, it is. And it's a beautiful man, cabinet. Man, it's a hard game. That cabinet is gorgeous. Yeah, that cabinet is sublime. I like, love it. I truly is, love that cabinet. If, if I had to make, like, a... Like a top ten list that that might that honestly might even be my number one. That's a very pretty cabinet. I mean, like that cabinet, the Tron cabinet, I think is beautiful. Mm. Tron cabinet's really cool. Um, what else is there? Honestly, those two are like one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like Popeye's so good. Yeah, the Popeye one is just so so damn That's good. such a good cabinet. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, it's uh, I was really surprised by that. Like the, I, you know, I. I I wasn't surprised as much for Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr. as launch games, but Popeye, I wasn't expecting that one. Yeah. Pretty interesting. You know, which, it's interesting because it's like, not that Popeye is exactly like Donkey Kong, but they, they have like similar-ish kind yeah. of things. So it's kind of interesting. It's just like, those are the three launch titles. Like, I uh, I definitely would have expected them to, um, you know, kind of something like baseball, if not baseball. You know, yeah. something that's a little different. Uh, yeah, it's interesting that, it was Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. Yeah, that and Popeye. I, Popeye. I, before our time, but I thought it was really interesting. It was a nice yeah, piece no, of that's trivia a, for Yeah, you. for sure. That's, uh, 
Yeah, I didn't know that one. You, mm -hmm. you got me stumped on it. Because so I, that's you know, like, like I said, I, stumped on. I know, um, I know, like the NES a bit better, and you know, arcades were a little before my time. Yeah. So it's like my my knowledge is not as strong as some some people from the like the earlier '80s than I no. was. Uh, but that's, that's a cool one. Yeah. So I now like that one. tell your friends if you want to trivia yeah. them on the Famicom, the history of the Famicom, three launch games, Don Kong, Don Kong Jr., Popeye. That's kind of crazy. I came, the Famicom came out in July. Yeah, July 15th, 1983. Yeah. It's, it just seems like such a weird month for a console to come out, you know? You'd think I mean, it would come out closer to, like, Christmas. You know, it's like, well, this is Japan, you know, number one, so maybe that's different. I don't know. But this was also, like, the 80s. This was, like, that's, so yeah. this was so early in the home console market, it's, you know... But, you know, like, Nintendo was already known for their toys and, and some of their arcade cabinets, obviously. Right. So, you know, it's like they already had, like, somewhat of a name where it's just, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like July is a, a weird month, but maybe there's something in July. Maybe. In Japan, you know, I... You know when the NES I'm, launched in, in the States? It was 85, for yeah, sure. definitely. But it was weird. Two the years time, later. the time is weird for the NES in, in America because there's, like... There's very uh, uh, like the 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 well, what's the, like the documents, you know, the like the yeah. They, there's so many things kind of lost to history, including like when certain games were released. Yeah, like, yeah. Like people have a hard time figuring out when like Mario Brothers was released in like the U.S. You know, it's like well, such that, a weird thing. So that was the issue because before we started the show, I, I picked a, a game that was like I don't, I can't find a specific like. There seems to be like contradic tra contradicting answers. It was Street yeah. Fighter Two, because yeah. Street Fighter Two, I couldn't find a legit like date. Yeah, and that's they, so weird. Yeah, it's like one like website these... was telling me July fifteenth. I was like, that seems weird. And then the other one was like February. I'm like what? <laughs> and, and then they, and then another one said uh, Street Fighter Two originally came out in June uh, for I think it was arcade and then or Japan and then like a month later. It came out in America, but there was no date. I was just right. like, well, what day is it? Like, I'm getting a bunch of different answers. <laughs> yeah, that's just like those early days of video games yeah. where, you know, you have these companies that just didn't keep the same kind of, like, documentation as they do now. Yeah. So it's just like, there are just things just lost to history that I I love kind of following that stuff because every once in a while you get some new piece of information yeah. where it's like, this one piece of paper was discovered on uh, somebody's attic that worked for Nintendo 40 years ago yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. And it's just like, you get these little tidbits and it's like, whoa, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's also kind of like the in the collector's mentality, it's like old boxes for games. Like back in the mm -hmm. day, they just used to get tossed. Like everyone just threw out their boxes. And like nowadays, you know, you find like an old school like Super Mario World box or like a, or, you know, Super Metroid box. Yeah. Like, and beautiful. Like, and they're big they're pieces of fortune. <laughs> yeah, they're worth a lot of money because everyone just used to throw those them out. Yeah. And I was so mad. My parents used to do that. They used to give me the game and they just, they would have the box and just throw it out. I'm like, no. Bunch of jerks. Yeah. But anyway. Anyway, so. Good yeah, times. That was, was a good one. Yeah. I, I dig it. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of our show, guys. Kind of. Uh, we, we did it. We, that's, that's kind of our we show. We made it through. We made a, we made a, we made a thing. We did. And guess what? This is episode 49. So next week, the big that's, uh, that's going to be the big five bagel. Yeah. So I no, guess. That's like a no. Yeah. You're, you're better than that. <laughs> we're better than that. Uh, yeah, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping we're going to we're gonna do something fun next week. I'm going to try and get that figured out literally like this week. I've, I've got a little time, so I'm going to yeah. try and do something like fun and exciting for, for, yeah. for us. You figure know? it out. So we'll see how that goes. So. You figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in the meantime... You can follow us in a couple different places. Uh, you can find yeah. us uh, at Go Multiplayer on Instagram and Twitter. We've been, both been like kind of super busy. Sorry, I'm gonna try and like do a lot more with that kind of stuff. To, um, I like I have pictures of this like cool room that we're in right now. Yeah. That I want to like put on Instagram. It's a picture People of me and Mona to, right there. I know, right? I have a, a cool picture of all that. So. Look forward for that, all, all that fun stuff. Um, and then you can find us personally. I'm at Zach Matzgan, Z A C K M A T Z G A N I S. Where and can we find you? I am at Jumpman underscore Ortiz on both Twitter and Instagram. Sweet! Yep. Good stuff. Cool. And, uh, you know, just uh, want to give a quick big old shout out to our boy DJ Cutman for that sweet, sweet chiptune music. 
for our good. intro and our outro. It's some good stuff. And our, I, I like our little multiplayer bits mm -hmm. music, which I'm going to be making more of those little bits for do, do, all you do, 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 uh, do, do, do. fun YouTube people out there. Yeah. Uh, and uh, once again, be sure to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash multiplayer where you can uh, get some awesome little bonus round episodes. Uh, you know, two a month, every other Friday. Uh, but, you know, if you don't want to toss some clams at us... I'll cry. No, uh, He will I'll cry. cry. Uh, but, yeah, no worries. Uh, the following week, that stuff will be on uh, YouTube. Hey, and no, you should worry about it, because I'll cry. <laughs> I will. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of it. I think we did it. I think we did. Crushed it. I think we got it. We got through this. Crushed it. Yeah, we did. Woo! All right. We will uh, see you next week for the episode 50. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Later. See you guys. We'd like to give a big old special thank you to Jaden Lawrence, Arturo Madeira, and Mercha Dan Kroll Pataryu. If you want to receive shout outs like these awesome, beautiful people, be sure to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash multiplayer. See you next time, players.